Hey out there, this is Joanne Ehrenhaus again from Senior Solutions. We're the Council on Aging for Southeastern Vermont and happy to be here today with a special guest, Anna Marie Pluhar, who has a wonderful program regarding shared housing that she is going to share with us today. Uh, she's not going to tell you everything because she's bringing a wonderful workshop to Brattleboro, but she's going to give you some really good ideas. Before we get started with that main idea first though, I would like to remind everybody out there that if you have not called the helpline at Senior Solutions, which is 802-885-2669, and asked about the Home Meds program, I would encourage you to do that so that we can get our nurse case manager to make an appointment with you. If you're 60 or over, and live in Wyndham or Windsor County, you, don't not, you do not have to be a client of Senior Solutions. Call the helpline and we'll set an appointment so that we can give you a home meds screening. This is the federal program. It's absolutely free, no obligation to anything, except that you be totally honest with our nurse case manager when she comes to your house and says, are these all the medications, vitamins, herbal remedies, and so forth that you have been taking? When you say yes, she will load them all into the computer and we send the results to our geriatric pharmacist in, Brattle, in Burlington. And he will confirm what she has discovered and will send the results to your primary care physician who will then have a consultation with you because many things that over the years, I don't know about you, but I've been known to hold on to some medications that I said, wow, that worked really great. I don't think I, don't think I need any more now, but maybe I'll save it wrong, get rid of it right away. If you hold on to it and try to use it later, you may be taking other prescriptions or over-the-counter meds that are gonna interact very badly with it. And you'd be surprised at some of the side effects people have experienced. Fainting, passing out while they're driving, mm -hmm. unnecessary trips to the ER, and internal organ damage because medicine is a chemical. And all these chemicals will react with each other. Your doctors do not have the time to constantly scrutinize what other doctors have been prescribing to you. So do us a favor. Call the helpline, 885-2669. Ask to get an appointment for the home meds program. Please, if you do it, you'll make me very happy because then I know there's somebody out there who's going to be okay. Thanks. All right, before we do anything else, Anna Marie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Joanne. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I was really excited that you're going to be here. So will you tell us a little bit about how, how you came to get involved with this idea? Mm. It's a story. So, Good. Sharing housing is what I call the organization. And it came about out of a conversation that I had with a friend of mine so many years ago when she was complaining about her finances. And I said, well, you have an asset, use it. And she said, what are you talking about? And I said, rent a room in your house. And she said, I don't know how to do that. And I think I did something like, well, I do. And she said, yeah, actually you do. Because at the time, I was living in Silver Spring, Maryland, in a four bedroom house that I had bought on purpose to live in as shared housing. Uh -huh. And it was about my year nine. Uh -huh of owning that house. Before that, I lived in shared housing. Before ah. that, I lived in shared housing. Before that, I lived in shared housing. So you're very experienced. I am deeply experienced. This, this is not just an idea. This is something you have lived. I have lived it. Great. And so in that conversation, what happened was Deb said, oh, yeah, that's right. You do, because she knew where I lived. Yeah. She'd been to my house. She said, will you coach me? Hmm. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And so we talked some more about it. And I said, yeah, I'd love to coach you. But it dinged the idea for me. And I was like, yeah, 
I have learned how to select housemates. That has to be a pretty tricky process. It's tricky and not tricky. Because you know the secrets. That I, I kind of begin to know the secrets. Mm -hmm. But part of the story is the next day, I was on a bus from Silver Spring to New York City, and I spent two hours writing the outline for the book. Wow. Wow. Which became Sharing Housing, a Guidebook for Finding and Keeping Good Housemates. Nice. Now, I didn't write it right away. <laughs> it sat on my computer. Yeah. I let sold that house. I moved to Vermont. I bought this house. And then there was that morning when I heard myself say to myself, hmm, are you ever going to do that project? And well, you've got people, the outline. I had the outline. Yeah. It was sitting on my computer, probably two computers. <laughs> and, you know, some people might say that wasn't me talking to me, but that I was being led. Yeah. And I kind of went, oh. Yeah, I should do that project because I knew that I, mm. if I died and I never did it, I would regret it. So, l other things happened that same week that just made things kind of sh come into place. I created an, I, okay. I didn't create, a friend created yeah. an accountability group, and okay. there were three of us working on books, and we met once a week, and the book got written, and it was published in 2011. Wow. Great. So that's how the book happened. And the book is really about what do you need to do? What's yeah. step one? What's step two, three, four, five? I how do you think about that? those steps are very important. They're hugely because important. the idea can be overwhelming to somebody. <laughs> but if they see that you've got it broken down into different segments, that and makes that it there's easier. there's a way to do it. Yeah. I, I know because I've been working on this now, what, it's 2020, so I have been working on this for nine years. Good. And I now have a nonprofit organization called Sharing Housing, Inc. Nice. And part of the reason you and I got here right now is that on February 1st mm -hmm. in Brattleboro, I'm doing a half-day workshop, right. a live workshop, not a webinar. I think that's webinar. very exciting. I'm excited about it, and Senior Solutions is supporting it. Well, so thank you, Senior Solutions, very much for you know helping why? make it possible. You know why we're supporting it? Why are you supporting because it? Because we also support the 60 and over population to help them continue to live in the home of their choice with yes. dignity and safely. And this is one of the ways to accomplish that. That's absolutely right. Of course, now, somebody has to move in or out of where they are, so there's a little bit. People have, well, people yeah. have a lot of resistance to this idea, <laughs> and I get that. In fact, I have an elderly friend from church who I tried to put the, the flyer in her hand on right. Saturday, and she said, oh, I'm never going to do that. And I, I thought, to... oh, that's too bad, because she's a widow. Okay. Her husband died about two years ago. Mm -hmm. They were a much beloved couple. I'm sure she's still she's in the house that they yeah. raised and lived in for all of those a lot years. Of memories. She's not driving at night. Ah. I mean, she when I saw her last week, what put me the idea in my yeah. head was I ran into her at another friend's house, and we had a <laughs> lovely little tea party. And then she said, "Oh, it's getting dark. I have to leave." Uh, and uh, this is one of the benefits of living in shared housing is that if you're no longer able to drive at night yeah. or drive at all, right. there's somebody at home. There's That's a good point. There's somebody you can talk to, just have a casual cup of tea. And, you know, because one of the things that's so very difficult in our culture right. is that we don't drop in on each other anymore. Mm -hmm. I find myself making tech texting people to make an appointment to have a phone call, which is just <laughs> ridiculous, right? Hey, whatever works. Hey, it works for me now, yeah. but I think that for people who are, as they're getting older yeah. and less mobile and sure. less able to move around, that this idea about having somebody at home is a right. great idea. Well, just I'm just thinking about it as you're talking about it. You know, if you have, if you're living in a shared housing situation, and you don't drive anymore, well, what happens if you get a cold, and you want to get some cough syrup? What happens? Yeah, you, how do not, you manage? Not every pharmacy delivers, so right. if you have somebody living in the house with you that still drives, 
they don't mind taking a five minute trip around to the store to come and bring the cough medicine. And they can pick it up on their way home right, because whatever. they're coming home. Yes, yes. You know, which is a big deal. And yes. I think that a lot of people who are in couples or families, they don't realize how much they help each other out. True. Just living at home. And that when you have somebody at home, it you you can have that relationship. You might not. But right. that's the one I'm hoping Yeah, you don't for. have to be like best friends with the person. Oh gosh, no. Okay, so here's my word. Okay. I want you to use it. Yes. I want everybody to use it. I'm ready. People should have home mates. Home mates. Not roommates. Mm -hmm. Roommates are for camp and college. Okay. Housemates is okay, but I think that at a certain age, yeah. we want something a little different. And We're so this word, homemate, for me, my definition is yeah. someone you like and respect, very important, mm -hmm. whose ways of living at home are compatible enough okay. that everybody is comfortable. So you shouldn't be the odd couple. No, <laughs> no. And I've had people say to me, oh, maybe I should have used your process when I decided who I was going to marry. <laughs> well, that's but a we, different story. It's totally know, no. different story. Anna Marie, that's your next book. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the homemate relationship, this is the really interesting thing about yeah. it. It is unlike any other relationship mm. you can have. Unlike any. So people who say, oh, I couldn't live with anybody because they have memories of bad family dynamics uh. or bad marriage dynamics or difficult children dynamics or uh. a difficult roommate dynamic okay. from an earlier time. Um, they, but it's, it's, it's a different relationship mm -hmm. because you're coming into it as an adult. True. You're making a business decision. Yep. It's an economic decision. It's like a partnership almost. It's a partnership about sharing a home mm -hmm. so that everybody is comfortable. Nice. Right? So I have a story I tell oh, about good. this homemate thing, which is, um, so when I was in my 30s, I lived in a four-bedroom apartment in Cam near Cambridge, Mass., Somerville, mm -hmm. Mass., for those who know it. And I loved that apartment. It was convenient. My rent was ridiculously cheap because I was sharing it. And I stayed there for eight years. Well, that's a long time. And I learned some bad, I learned some lessons about what not to do in selecting housemates. And I learned some good lessons. And one of the people who I lived with for four years mm -hmm. was a fellow by the name of Chris. And Chris, over that four years, we got pretty close. We got to know a lot about our families. And he um, started dating a woman, got engaged, married her. Mm -hmm. or, and at the wedding, which I naturally went to, of course. Uh, it was, out on, it was in, um, on the Cape somewhere, and I discovered that I was really uncomfortable. And I was like, well, what's the Why? matter with you here? And so I started thinking about it, and I realized that Chris and I had been outside the house with each other exactly once before. Really? We had never done oh. anything outside of the house. So you didn't go shopping together? We didn't go shopping. We didn't have friends. We didn't, didn't go, go to the, parties. Didn't go we to didn't the go to the movies. Oh, my gosh. We we were homemates. Right, right. We had a home together. Right. We didn't try to cook together. That would have changed some of the dynamics. But, but when we encountered each other at home, mm -hmm. we chit chat, chit chat, chit chat. Sure. I knew about his mother. I knew about his brother. He knew about my siblings, my parents. You know, we knew about our yeah. lives. And actually, he was in, very mm -hmm. influential in my life. Come to think of it. Um, when I was starting to think about, oh, I don't really like this job, I should be doing something else. Mm -hmm. And he went, uh, no, 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 no. This is a good job, you should stick to okay. it. And I did, and that was a that was, it was good, good advice. good decision. Very yeah. good advice. So this homemade thing is yeah. different, and that's something that I'm working on trying to help people understand. It's not really, you, you don't experience 
togetherness with your homemate in any social situations necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah. It changes, okay? Sure. So there's a woman, I have on my blog, so my blog is sharinghousing.com, and we also have a website, sharinghousing.com. Org, okay. Because the dot com was already there before I started the nonprofit, so the org is the nonprofit. Good. It's a little confusing, and That's I right. haven't figured and out. And we how better to fix repeat it. that at the end of the segment. I will repeat that. Okay. Um, so on my on my blog, yeah, I have a category of articles that I call "Real People Sharing Housing." Uh-oh. <laughs> and it's interviews with people who are actually sharing housing. Yeah. And I have, it's now, I think I'm like up to 48 or 50. Ooh, that's yeah. a lot. Because one of the things that's true yeah. is that people who live in shared housing, where it's good, yeah. are just like, yeah, I live in, yeah, I have a housemate. Yeah, I live, I live in shared housing. Or somebody will come along and they go, wait, I know somebody who does that. You know? And they don't mm -hmm. think of it as being anything particularly special. Right. They just found it worked for them. They're just finding it. It's, it's home. Yeah. yeah. So there was an elderly <laughs> woman who came to one of my talks. Mm -hmm. um, and she came up to me afterwards and said, I lived like that for 30 years and never thought nothing of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and well, it she should have made an outline and written a book. She would have gone places. She didn't think about it. She, she had been a dean at a school and so on. Yeah. But yeah. That's so cool. I raised her because yeah. what happened for her yeah. is that she and her housemate, her homemate, um, became really close friends. Okay over the course of the year yeah, so that years. they celebrated Christmases together and the families were all new well, each other. Well, they're like other. family. They and knew they each other like family. like family. Yeah. And it was a wonderful relationship for That's her. That's nice because not only as you get older, sometimes you could use a little bit of a financial underpinning. Oh, yes. But you also need to continue socialization so that you don't get lonely depressed yep. and all these and then have self-neglect issues so this fulfills a lot of people's needs that's what I think that's what I think I agree with you and now I should say that I don't we don't do matching okay and you know there's I can see the benefit of matching mm -hmm. I can see the benefit of matching the problem is it's expensive to do Mm -hmm. um, and to have a program that does the matching itself. So my piece is what I am trying to do is to advocate for this, to put it right. in people's heads, right. and to educate people yeah. in how to do it. And the that's thing nice. that's interesting about the how mm -hmm. is I know that people have a lot of, uh, like, oh, what if, it's, what if it goes bad kind of problem? Mm -hmm. And that's real, that's real. But it is also true, Joanne, that in all of the work that I've done in talking about this, every bad experience I have heard about mm -hmm. has been the result of an ineffective, incomplete, or non-existent selection process. Uh. Seriously. I have never heard yeah. of a bad setup where the person who was telling me about the bad setup couldn't sort of say to me, oh yeah, well, you know, yeah, there was a moment in the interview or I thought I could overcome it. Or I didn't pay attention I, to that signal. I didn't pay attention yep. to that signal. I thought I was more grown up. Oh, that's a that good I one. That I could handle that. Nobody is as grown up as they think they are. And what happens at home is mm. different. So, dirty dishes in the sink. <laughs> if you're a person who hates dirty dishes in the sink, you should not live with somebody who doesn't mind it. Right. Oh, that, that could be a deal breaker. It's a deal breaker. It can. It yeah. was a deal breaker in one of the interviews <laughs> I did. That was exactly the deal breaker. So... Well, and people have to recognize what their particular deal breakers are. Yes. You know, some people might say, well, I don't really love dogs, but I could live with them. Okay, but if somebody is allergic or has had a bad experience as a child being bitten by a dog, they're not going to react the same way. Correcto. Okay. 
you've got it. All right. You've got it. And so those are very important. That's part sure. of what I want to do in training is to help people identify yeah. what those things are for them Great. or to be, start thinking about it. In the half-day workshop, I can't quite do that. But in the half-day workshop, what I want to do, what I want people to walk out with. Wait, let me just say something. People, pay attention to this. This is a really important part. Okay, <laughs> go. <laughs> what I want people to walk away with is a sense of like, oh, maybe I could do this. Nice. I'm going to assume people are interested in doing it, but I, what I <laughs> recognize is that it takes, I mean, where do you learn how to interview a housemate or a homemate? They don't teach that in high school or college. You can't find it on, the only place you can find it on the web is At your, what? And what was your website? Sharinghousing.com. Thank you. And what it could be confusing to people listening to this, so I want to be clear, is it so happens that I'm also offering an online webinar course oh, that wow. starts February 4th and meets four times in the month of February okay. through, through a technology called Zoom. So we do video Great. conferencing, Good. and so people can come from all over the country for that. Well, what if somebody signed up and did your half-day program? They went home and said, oh, my God, I didn't take all the notes. Maybe they could if they re wanted to review, come. do the webinar as a follow-up. Yep, they could. Now, I'm careful when is about not saying webinar because <clears throat> these days what's beginning to happen yeah. is people are offering a lot of free webinars. Okay, all right. And my course is not free. Well, you've put a lot of work and research and knowledge into this. However, I have a pay from the heart plan. Oh. Because one of the things I've realized, this is for the online webinar, we'll talk about the half day yeah. in a minute. The on, I've realized is that many people come to the idea of sharing housing because they're desperately poor. Yeah, they may have a hard time meeting the mortgage payment. And they are just going, ng, 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 yeah. what am I going to do? Okay. So um, I offer a 25 is the minimum for four-week course, which is, I think, pretty reasonable. That's very reasonable. And it reasonable. makes sure that people are actually committed because That's I right. don't want people to sign up and then not show up. That would no. hurt. Um, and then whatever. Right. Whatever people. So it's pay from the heart. It's what do you think you can afford That's to really contribute. That's really kind. Well, it's what I. It's You're making what I it want very to do. accessible to people who actually can use it, and many of them may even need it. And need it. Yeah. Yeah. And and so. Now tell the, us about your half day. Yeah. So the half day, <clears throat> which is on a Saturday morning, and I did it on purpose Saturday, because I've done them during the weekdays, and mm -hmm. I've had people say, "Oh, I can't come because I work." Okay. So I'm trying out what a Saturday workshop will be like. Where are you doing it? I'm doing it at Winston Prouty mm -hmm. um, on the top floor. It's a gorgeous floor. We're going to have coffee and bagels nice. and stuff like that for, for people coming in. And the, what we're actually going to do is lots of interactive exercises oh, nice. because I do not believe in being a, a, they call it a sage on the stage kind of person. <laughs> Um, when I'm training, yeah. I really, really like, I, I know that people learn best by doing sure. and being. So lots of activities, Good. including an activity around understanding the benefits. Yeah, yep. Um, understanding guidelines for living well mm. with housemates. And kind of the practical process. So what are the steps? The, so sounds, that's an overview. I think it sounds very comprehensive. I try. In you know, a short period of time. And you, you kind of break it down like, yes, it's comprehensive. There's a lot that you're telling people about, but you're making it easy to understand. Thank it's you. a wonderful combination. I'm trying. I want people to come. Please come. <laughs> yes, please come to this. Now, how do they register? So they can register three ways. There's, this is a flyer that's around towns, I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. And there are three ways. One is to go to sharinghousing.org. And look in the nav line for Brattleboro Workshop, and you can sign up that way, use Great. a credit card. Oh, so it's $35. Which but don't I, they get the book as well? And they get a copy of the book. So that you get to take part in the workshop, you learn all the secrets from Anna Marie, and you go home with a book. And you go home with the book. 
So I Definitely. think that's a great deal. What's the date of this workshop again? It's February 1st. Okay. Um, so one way to register is through my website, mm -hmm. sharinghousing.org. Another way to register is to call Senior Solutions. Okay. Ask for Tracy Blanchard, and that phone number is 885-2655. And what we would expect is that you would bring a check to the, to the workshop. Sure. Um, or you can mail me a check to Sharing Housing at 621 East West Road, East Dummerston, Vermont, 05346. Thank you. So this those is great. The ways. Now, just so you people know, if you didn't have time to write this down, in another week or so, if you see my, or next week, if you see my column in the Brattleboro Reformer, I will include the link to this show and I will repeat the registration information for you in the column, or just call Senior Solutions. Call senior Solutions. If you didn't get the number, you can always call the helpline, and that's easy. Anybody there that's answering the phone will be happy to patch you over to Tracy or take the message and give it to her. So don't miss this opportunity to find a way to maximize the biggest asset you'll ever have in your life, which is your home. And if you're having trouble getting it painted, fixing the roof, whatever the, the situation is, this will help you get extra income and yes. gain somebody to share the home with you so that when you come home at night, there's a light on for you. Absolutely. We haven't said that the workshop's from 9 to 1230. Oh, good point. And people might be interested in knowing that. Great. And I love that line from Tom Baudet. <laughs> no, there's a line waiting, there's a light waiting for you. Um, the, one of the quotes I often use is it was Margaret Mead who said, she thinks that it's almost a universal human need to have someone who wonders where you are when you don't come home at night. I think that's an excellent point. So everybody out there, we want you all to have somebody waiting for you to come home. So please get in touch with Anna Marie. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Joanne, for Thank this you. time. And we'll be back again at another date with more news from Senior Solutions. Thank you. Thank you.